Okay, let's look at a second example. This example is slightly more involved. Now you have two particles now, A and B, and two boxes. Okay, and they are initially in contact with each other. Okay, and they're sitting on this conveyor belt. Okay, and conveyor belt is tilted 15 degrees from horizontal. Now, initially the whole thing's at rest. And the conveyor belt is started suddenly, such that slipping occurs. Okay, so it will slip. Okay, so there's a relative motion between the boxes and the conveyor belt. Okay, now the kinetic coefficient frictions are given. Okay, for A and B, you're asked to find the initial acceleration. Okay, for A and B, okay, for as long as the slipping occurs. Right. So initially, slipping occurs, obviously, uh, from experience, you, you would think that after a while, a short while later, um, these boxes will catch and be converted out, and then they won't slip anymore, and so they will spiral the belt. Okay? So now we're concerned with just the initial few moments okay, when this belt is started suddenly. Okay? what are the accelerations of A and B. Now looking at this problem right here, now we have two particles in contact with each other. Each of them have different mass right, and different coefficient of kinetic friction right, between them and the conveyor belt. Now you have to find accelerations of A and B right, individually. You might ask, are they different? Okay. Um, and also, are they going to separate? Okay. Or are they going to stick together okay. after the conveyor belt is started? Well, let's consider both cases. If they stick together, okay, things will be more complicated because they are now pushing in each other, so between them there are forces. Right? And then how are we going to take care of the coefficient of kinetic friction now? Right? So this analysis might be a little more complicated. But what if they separate? Okay, initially, right from the get-go. They separate. So they can be analyzed separately. And then then we can apply a second law to find A and AB separately. Well, but the problem here is we don't know whether they will separate or not. The beauty of engineering analysis is that if you don't know something, assume something. So, here's what I'm going to assume. Make assumptions. I'm going to assume that they separate. Okay? They separate and not only that they separate, I'm going to also assume that acceleration of B is greater than acceleration of A. And both particles A and B move upward. X and B is going this way, AA is also going upward, but AB is greater than AA, so that they will separate. Okay, so box B will move faster than box A, okay? but both will tend to move up. Okay, so that's my assumption. Let's go with the assumption and apply the kinetic equation, second law. Alright, so let's follow the procedures. Step one, choose a coordinate system. Now, in this case, my box A and B, they both move in this direction, okay, 15 degrees from horizontal. So, maybe it's more convenient than for me to define my x direction as 15 degrees also from the horizontal. All right, so that's my x. Step two and three. 
draw a free body diagram and Kinetti diagram. Now I'm going to draw just one okay, uh, general box. And this box can be applied to box A or box B because I assume that they're separate. So, okay, so they're not touching each other now. So, box A, free body diagram. I mean, box A or B, right? So this is a kinetic diagram. Right? Okay, free body diagram once again doesn't have any physical attachment, so I'm not going to draw some bare belt. So I'm just going to draw for free body diagram all the forces acting on it. Here, for either box, I have weight, right? and weight is simply mg. And that's given. You get either mass is given. Let's say what else? What are the forces? Well, we have obviously normal forces. But normal force now is acting normal to the surface, right? To point contact. So this is normal force. And let's see what else. As far as I know, I don't see any other forces acting on this whole picture other than the fact that now we have kinetic friction, okay, because flipping occurs. So, kinetic friction now is the key. The problem is, what direction should I draw kinetic friction? You do know that kinetic friction is in this direction, right? But is it pointing upward or downward? Which way should I draw the arrowhead? Keep in mind, friction force always opposite to relative motion. Okay. So once this connect, uh, this conveyor belt starts uh, starts going. Okay. When slipping occurs, this conveyor belt will go this way. That's the slipping, right? So as far as this crate is concerned, the relative motion, right, the motion of this crate relative to the belt is actually this way. Okay? Relative motion. Alright? So this crate would tend to as if it's grade is moving downward relative to this belt. Okay? So, friction force opposes this relative motion. Therefore, friction force goes upward. This is my friction force, F, F. Okay? That's important to recognize. Right? Relative motion. It's the opposite of relative motion. Okay, so friction force equals mu k times normal force. Alright, so now this is my free body diagram, and that's all. Move on to kinetic diagram. Here, it's just simply A, that's all. Okay. If you want, you can, you can write AX, okay, but you know that it's already in the X direction. Okay. So, so that's really not necessary. Okay. Alright, so that's all. So, now, Again, I want to emphasize that this is my x direction, this is my y direction. Okay. Next step, step four. Newton's second law. F equals m a vector. Okay. Split into two components, x and y component. Okay. So x direction sum of forces x equals m a x for each particle. Right? So right now, I, I, this is not specific to it, any of the, uh, the boxes. Okay? So for either box. Okay? okay, so left hand side. Let's look at this free body diagram. So pick out all the forces in the x direction. So now we have f f and what else? Look at this weight right here. This weight points down this way, but then we need to split that into components now. Right? So 
this now becomes W of X component. This becomes W of Y. So it's the negative of WX, okay? Because WX points downward in the negative X direction. And the dot equals M A, okay? Y direction, okay? Again, look at this free body diagram. 